Hello. Thank you for uh, joining uh, uh, one of, another one of our virtual presentations from Google Cloud AI Developer Relations. My name is Andrew Froelich, and I'm a staff member of Google Cloud AI. Today, I'm going to discuss um, my experiments with the COVID-19 data set uh, using deep learning and computer vision. Um, what I did here is I'm, I want to learn the pandemic distribution per country, or in other words, being able to predict the daily new case curve. So let me start with some background information, what that means. So this chart here, or charts like this have been highly publicized uh, recently. They show two different distributions, what a distribution of a pandemic would look like when there is no intervention, which is this distribution here, and what the distribution would look like if you had ideal intervention, or what they refer to as flattening of the curve. The reality is no single country has an ideal intervention. And if you look at their dis current distribution, where they currently are in the pandemic, it's going to be somewhere between here and here. And what we want to do is use the existing data to learn or identify their actual distribution between these two points and being able to then predict forward into the future what it will look like. Before I started, I made some observations. That is, I, was, I looked at uh, existing data for countries and their existing distributions, and I tended to notice a few things. First, on the left side or the early part, it tended to appear much like the non-intervention reference curve here, meaning most countries started like this. Uh, those countries that had showed some flattening stage, that flattening stage didn't have that smoothness. It tended to fluctuate or be um, jagged. That is, instead of seeing this, you saw something more like that. The initial downslope, that is when the few countries that started to show containment, did tend to appear to be more like the intervention or the ideal intervention reference curve. But the ending where he had eradication, and we really only have two examples, China and South Korea, tended to have a long tail shape. That is, instead of coming down like this, it tended to come down and then just sort of keep going like that. So I'm going to show you some existing distributions as bar charts. So this is South Korea. So you can see it has that distribution curve that we expected. You can see the jaggedness here during the flattening stage, but you see the long tail. Similarly, in China, if you eliminate these two days where they changed their testing methodology, you see a curve here that's very much like the flattening curve, but then you have the long tail. In Italy and Spain, which are more in the stabilization containment stage, here you can see that jaggedness coming up and down. And same here. So let's go to a few more. So if we go to Germany and Iran, so uh, in Germany, you can see how we're kind of coming up. And we suddenly have this jaggedness of coming down. So there's sort of certain inconsistencies here. Um, in Iran, you have what at first might have looked like a flattening curve. And then suddenly it goes up. So this is a totally different distribution. And then in the United Kingdom and the United States, which are much earlier in uh, the pandemic, you can see they're still in the early part where you're rising. Okay, so my approach here was to, what I want to do, my goal is, is to use computer vision to learn those distributions from the existing data and then predict out the remainder of the distributions on a per country basis. But I'm not using a conventional approach. This is time series data and one normally would use a recurrent neural network. And on top of that, it's structured data. So you are tabular data so you wouldn't use computer vision. But instead, I'm going to um, uh, 
uh, treat this as a computer vision problem by converting my structured data into images and use those images to train a feed-forward convolutional neural network. In this case, those images are bar charts. For example, if the counts for the first three days for a country are 10, 20, and 30, I would create three bar charts. The first bar chart would have a bar for 10. The second bar chart would have a bar chart for 10 and 20. The third bar chart would have a bar chart for 10, 20, and 30. Then what I did is I also normalized the data uh, across all the countries. So for every country, when I started generating the bar charts, I took all the data I had so far and found the maximum value. And then I just divided all the numbers by the maximum value. So every country's bar chart is normalized in proportion to every other country. I then took a uninitialized or stock ResNet V2. I removed the top layer that's normally used for image classification. And I replaced it with a dense layer with a single node and a linear uh, activation, which makes it a regressor. I'm going to predict a real value. So this data set is unlabeled. It's not annotated. So training, it, so the way we train it is we're going to use a self-supervised version of training. And for every image, the auto gender label is going to be whatever the next day's new cases was. So I'll give you an example of some of these bar charts. So here is for the US. This is uh, for the range I had, I was working with, this is day 13, day 14, day 15. So you can see on day 13, we're here. On day 14, I add the next bar. On day 15, I add the next bar. And they're all auto labeled with the next day's new case count. So my general approach here was to take batches of these images and feed them through a model for training. And of course, on the other side is I'm training it to predict what the next day's bar chart would look like. So if this is time t, predict what it would look like at time t plus 1. In the ideal, if this actually worked, I could then spin around these projections where a train model, get the last day, let's call it time t, predict t plus 1, take that image, spin it around, predict t plus 2, spin it around, predict T plus three and project out the distribution for that country. So let's go ahead and look at my notebook next. And then finally, we'll cover my results and observations. So this is my notebook. Um, over here on the left side are my automatically generated images. As you can see, there's quite a few of them. Uh, we take an arbitrary one for United Kingdom at day 14. Uh, let's take this look at it at day 28, and that's what it looks like. We'll close those up. So my notebook here, um, I'm going to go through it fairly fast. Uh, it starts off with explaining my approach here and all my functions. I won't go into much detail. Um, my first little function here, helper function, is blank image. That helps. That makes me a blank black image of the size I want that I'm going to make a bar graph on. Um, I'm going to get my data. It's in a CSV format, and I'm going to read it into a pandas data frame. I'm going to then take that pandas data frame and sort of repackage that data into a format that I can quickly generate images. So that's what this prep data does. Um, then this is my generate images as I showed you here on the left side. So it's taking all that data on a per country basis and generating these images. I'm telling it to generate it, you know, these bar graphs as a, in an image is 224 by 224, and the width of every bar is two pixels. And if you look at the names here, I have it, the country name, the sequence numbers, this is day 23, day 24, day 25, and the number that follows it is the next day's um, a tally, new case count. And that's what we want to predict. Then this reads in all those files. 
and processes them and gets them ready for training. So of course we're going to read them in as images. Um, we're going to go ahead and normalize the data here. And yeah, that's probably enough. And then have another one here called pre-process input that prepares that once we have a trained uh, model and we take an image, it prepares the image the same way it was trained. So when we do prediction. So here's me, I start preparing my data set. I read it in as a pandas data frame. I uh, prep it uh, into a format to generate images. I generate my images. I pre-process the data. I get my train and test data along with the labels. Um, now these are gonna be grayscale images. So their uh, shape is height width. 224 by 224, I'm using a convolutional neural network in uh, TensorFlow Keras. So I have to also spe specify the channel. It really needs to be in the shape 224, 224, 1 for the one channel. And that's what this does here, this expand dim. I'm just adding a channel of one to that. Uh, next, I'm going to get a stock ResNet V2 uh, that has been modified. And as you can see, I'm using a little bit of regularization here. So the first thing I do is I do some pre-training. I start off with warm-up training to get numerical st stabilization on the weights in the model. Once that occurs, I do my automatic hyperparameter tuning to find the best learning rate. And then I'm going to train the model for 40 epochs. Now, what I found when I was training, I was getting inconsistent results. Sometimes I would train and I'd seem to be nailing it. And then a lot, but a lot more times when I trained it, I would get a model that would substantially underestimate the counts. And that occurred far more often. And it didn't seem to change whether I added more epochs or kept training, kept training, kept training and making the loss go smaller and smaller and smaller. And it didn't appear that my model was memorizing or overfitting because I was using validation uh, uh, data after every epoch. And it's always stayed consistent, the loss on the training data and the loss on the validation data. There was just no evidence of overtraining. So I finally resorted to checkpointing. And on this last round, I ran 40 epochs and I checkpointed every other epoch. And then what I did is I took a handful of countries and used the last day to predict out the next day. But I actually did this at the end of the day. So I actually knew the counts for the next day and spun around and read in uh, every checkpoint did a prediction. So I have 20 checkpoints and then did the prediction. And of course, the first few, the first few epochs were uh, meaningless. And then of the remainder, very, very few of them predicted in the ballpark. The vast majority of those checkpoints predicted underestimated substantially. And it was intermixed. And there was nothing going back looking at the output from the training that correlated with that. And what I finally concluded is that when I first started this model and first started training, I used only a subset of data. And then I used it from countries, developed countries, United States, Canada, China, South Korea, etc. And I tended to get outputs that were more consistent. Then I started adding in um, the data from less developed countries. And that's when I got this irregular behavior. And then I looked at their par charts and I realized there was a lot of chaos, you could say, or erraticness uh, to their distributions. And I think it could be accounted for everything from inconsistencies in reporting, inconsistencies in testing, um, just all of that uh, put together. And one of the things I saw a lot is you see a ramp up and then one day suddenly a big drop. 
and then a ramp up and another day a big drop and so you had this weird behavior and i suspect that i had so much data looking that way that the model actually learned that pattern that is that noise and when it sees an upward trend it predicts what's going to happen next is a big drop and that's why I was getting these underestimates. So I was careful to pick the checkpoint that didn't get trained for that noise. So I'll give you my conclusion. All right. So I did two separate trainings here to report on. First, I took the data up through April 2nd and then reported it for my prediction and then had it predict April 3rd. And I compared it against the real ones. So here for the U.S., like per, the model predicted uh, 30,000 and the actual was 32,000. So it's fairly close. Canada's 1,600. It was about 1,100. It was in the ballpark. Um, United Kingdom, really close, 4,900. Here about 4,500. Australia, it over predicted. Here, Australia is going sort of in the stabilization containment. Uh, Italy, again, over predicted. Um, Spain, not so much overpredicted, but a little bit. But now we get into Germany, seems to be right on. Uh, France, overpredicted. And Iran, a little bit overpredicted. Then I further tuned the model because I learned all this uh, about these different epochs and this behavior. And when I picked the epoch that I felt was the most ideal and used um, or checkpoint that was most ideal and use that for prediction on um, using data up through April 3rd and predicting April 4th. I got pretty good results here for the U.S. I predicted 31,000. It was 34,000. Uh, Canada it was a lot closer. Predicted 1,100. It was 1,500. United Kingdom predicted 3,900. It was 3,700. Uh, Australia didn't over predict as much. Uh, Italy looked almost right on, uh, about 4,500 to 4,800. Uh, Spain, really close, 7,500 to, that uh, was about 7,000. Germany, I over-predicted a modest amount. France was a special case because on that day, they changed their reporting methodology, so you can't really count this one. Um, Iran, you can see I'm really close in the ballpark. Um, Turkey pretty close in the ballpark, Switzerland the same, uh, Belgium a little bit under, Netherlands uh, almost right on. Um, so that's um, um, the end of my presentation and, and thank you for watching.